Welcome back. Now, when we think of step parents, hardly ever does a positive image come to mind. From media to society and even fairy tales, the stepmother, more specifically, is almost always portrayed as the villain. So what does this mean for real-life step parents who have married into a situation where not all of the children or none are bi biologically theirs? It actually has a name blended family which essentially is a family consisting of a couple the children they have had together and their children from previous relationships now what unique challenges do they face with such a setup and how do they unite a family they themselves are trying to adapt to well in kenya the exact number of blended families is not known a survey conducted in 2012 by professor shelley clark an associate professor of sociology at canada's mcgill university University and Professor Dana Pamplova uh, from Prague's Charles University and Institute of Sociology found Kenyan women have a 59.5% chance of being a single mother by the age of 45, either through a premarital birth or dissolution of a union. Now, the likelihood of their children growing up in a single parent home or a blended family situation consequently heightens. Now, statistics aside, blended families come into this unique situation as a result of the love between two individuals. The question is, can that same love bind together a family that is fragments of another. Joining me in studio now as we have this conversation are Catherine Karyuki, who is a stepmom and fashion and lifestyle blogger, as well as Jacqueline Akea, who is also a stepmom, but also a blended families coach. This has really become like a labor of love for you, Jackie. Uh, no one really wakes up and starts thinking, I want to be a step parent. No. Um, but many people find themselves in that situation. What are some things they need to consider before they get into that setup? Uh, thank you, Victoria. Uh, being a stepmom is not easy, and I think being a step parent generally is not easy. Mm. Though more and more families and more and more kids are going to grow up in a step family situation. So, what should you do? Uh, the first thing I think you need to do is to prepare for the step family and preparation as the parents so that you prepare and get more informed about the complexities and the dynamics of the blended family network mm. because the, the dynamics are different compared to the ordinary nuclear family where we have mom, dad, and kids. Right. So preparation is key. You can do that through premarital counseling. And also preparation of the children is also key mm. because most kids, especially in African setting, wake up one day and find uncle or auntie is now stepmom yeah. or stepdad. Right. So most kids actually wake up one day and find themselves stepchildren. So we also need to prepare the kids into the different shift that the family is taking. And speaking of shift and coming into this new arrangement uh, for you, Catherine, you got married, you're in love, uh, but there's kids in the picture and now you're a mom apart from being wife. How was that adjustment for you? Um, thank you for having me, Victoria. The adjustment was obviously difficult in the beginning, but you see, like Jackie mentioned earlier, the preparation. You s have sit down with your partner, understand what you're getting yourself into, um, discuss on the role that you're going to take, because when you enter there, you are not really sure, am I coming in as a parent, as a friend, as a roommate? You know, so you discuss the role with your partner, what role am I going to take in the beginning mm -hmm. as we build this relationship? Because don't forget, we are strangers to one another. So you have to work at it, to work at building this relationship, to earn their trust, to earn their love. Yes. I mean, how did you do that? Because you mentioned something very important, which is defining the roles. Um, and especially when you're coming into a situation where the kids are a bit older and you do want to create a relationship, but you are also an authority figure in the house. So how do you show that, yes, I'm mom, yes, I can be a friend. Do you put them together or do you separate? I mean, how did you work it out in your situation? So in the beginning, you, first of all, not every child will react the same. Mm. So first of all, understand every child according to their personality. Understand that you have to be patient. And each one of them will do it at their own pace. So I would advise you start slow. Obviously, you'll have a talk with them. Like Jackie said, you just don't wake up one morning and say, 
hi, I'm your new stepmom. Mm -hmm. no, you definitely there's a process and there's a plan, and you have to sit down with your partner and come up with this plan beforehand. So don't just throw it on the children. And how many kids do you have? Six. Wow, amazing. So of course, uh, five from uh, your husband. Four from my husband. Four from your husband, okay. One adopted. Okay. And then one hours between the two of us. It's like an entire tribe in that house, my yeah, goodness. It's a seven aside. Wow. I mean, <laughs> and, and, and Jackie, for you, because that was the situation you found yourself in before you even came into this whole business of helping blended families. Um, what was your situation like becoming a stepmother? Uh, the reason I came into the business of uh, supporting the people in blended families is because I thought it, was easy, it would be easy. I thought uh, love conquers all. So because we love each other, this we can ah. work it out. Yeah. And it's not the same. Yeah. The dynamics are so different. And being a stepmom, it's one of the most negatively stereotyped roles in the entire society. So it is a, it's such a lonely journey. I could sit with other women and they could talk about their kids, yeah. how, oh my kid, I'm in you mm. know, this is happening. I couldn't say it. Because if I said it, I feared that they would say, oh, you're just saying that because that's your stepchild. Mm. So it is such a lonely journey. And for me, there are also many mistakes that I, I did because I didn't know what to do. Right. And that is why I had to learn more about step families, research more about step families, and use my skills mm. as a psychologist and counselor and come up with this organization that can actually support other women and other step families through their journey. Yeah, and I mean, when it comes to, this is a big one, discipline. Yes. I, I remember hearing, uh, it was Dr. Phil during an interview, he was talking about blended families, and he said, if you come into the situation where the children are over 14 years old, don't discipline them. True. But if you come before then, because you've kind of developed this relationship and trust with them, then you can begin to kind of set down rules and discipline them. I mean, what do you make of that assessment when it comes to discipline? It's quite true. Mm. The ages of the kids also determine how the, integri the integration of the family, uh, the blended family will go. Mm, the younger the kids, the easier it is. Yeah. The older the kids, the more complicated mm. it is. Right. However, the basic number of years should be maybe about four years to seven years before we find a working, find the balance. yeah, we find a balance as a family. Yeah. Mm. So it really needs patience. Mm. So the younger the kids, it's easier to start disciplining. Mm. I came into my kids, my stepkids' life when they were very young. Mm -hmm. So maybe it was easier for me to discipline, but still, when they get to a certain age and they start self-identification, yeah. knowing who am I. You don't, uh, my, my relationship with them also be becomes questioned and their identity is more on their biological parents. parents. Yeah. So there are times that also you, I, I had to step back. Right. As they identify themselves and know who they are, mm. I had to step back and the bio parent has step to be the disciplinarian. Mm. Yes. I mean, for you, uh, Catherine, you came in where some of the kids were older than 14. Yes. How did that change the dynamic when it came to, to discipline, for instance? So for <coughs> me, it was a bit different, like she, like she said. There were some of them are a bit older. So in the beginning, the dad was a disciplinarian. Okay. So that was, that was not my, my JD to now. Mm -hmm. Now, after 10 years later, I'm the disciplinarian. Wow. Because I've earned their trust. Mm. They believe that I come from a good place. And you have to set the rules because I have to, they have to know I'm a figure of authority. Mm, mm. And as you're setting these rules, you're also setting together with all of them. So you're setting together, together with the kids and together with the dad. So you're one team. So you and your partner have to be one team, especially when they're older. They have to see a strong team. I mean, how do you create that one team? Because, mm -hmm. you know, some kids feel you are just my parent's spouse. Oh, well, yeah. You're not my parent. Oh, yeah. So, so how do you start to develop that relationship where you say, no, I'm actually, I'm actually mom to you. But you know, actually, it's true. Yeah. You're actually yeah. the Just parent spouse. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and you're, you're not a replacement. Oh, you're not a replacement mom. Right. Mm. You're not here to replace anyone. the bio mom or the bio dad. Right. If you're mm. Because case, the biological, yeah. nobody can replace a biological yeah. parent, actually. Yeah. No. 
Yeah. So you, you come into the situation telling them, I'm, I know I'm your stepmom, I'm your father's wife, but I'm, we can develop our own personal relationship. Mm -hmm. it, I'm your bonus mom, I can be your bonus mom. It's the same way you can benefit from relationship from your auntie, your uncles. So I'm that bonus parent and I'm not here to compete, no. I mean, I like that, the fact that you said I'm the bonus parent, a bonus mom, you know, um, though at times, and you're human. Mm -hmm. Do you feel, uh, did you feel maybe uh, initially that you're being compared to the bio parent at mm -hmm. times? You know, the kids feel like, oh, I wish, because no kid wants, mm -hmm. you know, the, the marriage between their parents to dissolve. True. I mean, they don't want that. Mm -hmm. But the reality is it happens yes. and you find yourself in a new situation. So did you ever feel that pressure of, can I live up to that or did you not even bother to get into that space in terms of comparing yourself to the bio parent? Mm -hmm. For me, if I would, uh, if I'm to answer that, yeah. you know, comparison is the, is the thief of joy. Oh, yes. <laughs> so you're not here to compare. Mm. I'm not here to really be compared to the bio mom. There's some kids who are stepchildren, not because of uh, divorce only. Yeah. There's the death. Yes. There's the premarital birth. So there was never a marriage. Yeah. So there are so many circumstances that lead to blended families. Mm -hmm. And you're not here to compare to the person who is not here. But I am here now, and I'm going to try and do the best that I can, that I can mm. for you. Right. Yes. So I think that is it. And if the bio parent is around, mm -hmm. is alive, I think even though there's a blended family, even yeah. though that uh, your, your ex is remarried, you still have a part to play in your child's life. There is ex-husband, there is ex-wife, there is ex-boyfriend, ex-girlfriend, mm. ex yeah. yeah. but there's no, no ex-child. Ex mm. mm. Very true. Yeah. There's no ex-child. Yeah. And there's no ex-mom, mm. ex-dad. Right. Yes. Mm. So though the ship of love got wrecked somewhere, mm. the ship of motherhood and the ship of fatherhood is still there. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you do when the kids don't accept you? You've tried everything you can. Um, I remember reading a story of a step parent who said, I just decided to disengage. Mm -hmm. I, I, I thought if they're not going to accept me, I, I can't be spending my time and using my energies to develop a relationship they don't want. Um, so what do you do in a situation like that where they don't? Do you continue to push the point or fall back for a bit? Um, obviously, if at some point, if they decide not to connect and to accept you, you feel discouraged. But then, don't you think you're just proving them right? If I love my partner, and I knew this was part of the package, then giving up is not a solution. Okay, so once, sometimes you withdraw, and then you'll start again. And as long as you have good faith, and as long as they can see that you're trying and you're coming from a good place, there's nothing as no acceptance. Yeah, go ahead, Jackie. Uh, I, I also think you have to define acceptance. Mm. Mm. Yeah, you have mm. to define the acceptance because most of us step moms and step parents, we get disappointed because of the expectations mm. that we have. Mm. We really, and most of us, most of us come from the mom, dad, kid, yes. uh, child. Yes. So we expect the functioning that was there in our nuclear birth mm. family mm. is the same that will be there in my blended family. Mm. I expect that if I am the mother in this house, my role as a mother will be the same as my mother was mm. in her house where she was not in a blended family. Mm. So it's totally different. It's a total different ball game. Right. Here, I have mothering duties, yes, but there are aspects that I will not be taken in as a mother totally. Mm. That is why even though I will treat my stepchild so well, what will people say? She treats them like mm. her own. Mm. So the like will still be there. This is not still. The, uh, the dynamics are totally different. So when you're looking for acceptance, we have to define what acceptance That's is. True. Is acceptance, does it mean that when my family really works like the one that I came from, that is when I know that there's acceptance? Yeah. Or is acceptance going to look for a functionality in my blended families? Mm -hmm. A functionality that supports each and every individual member yeah. mm -hmm. in my family. A functionality that other people in 
the other families might not understand. Mm -hmm. Because what works in step families is not necessarily the same thing mm -hmm. that will work in the other families. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Disengaging, like you've said, yeah. mm -hmm. is not bad. Mm -hmm. It's a strategy in step families. Mm -hmm. As a step parent, you can disengage once in a while yeah. when you know that you're pushing and pushing and this is causing so much pressure. You know, like when you buy a Coke, and it has a lot of, it has been shaken and shaken. Mm -hmm. When you want to drink it, you open it strategically. You don't, you don't you yeah. yes. So at times you have to let this pressure that has built up in your step family re mm -hmm. get released mm -hmm. so that everyone, so that your marriage yeah. is okay, the relationship with the kids is okay, and the step kids are also at the right place. And at that time as a step parent, you can strategically disengage and let the bio parent take the lead in parenting mm. and all the other decisions. Mm. The unfortunate thing, most men who marry, who remarry, expect the woman that they married will come in and fill the shoe of, of the, the other, woman. completely, the other woman, mm. completely. Mm. So they leave all the parenting role to the step parent. Mm -hmm. And at that point, as a step mother, you are disadvantaged. Mm -hmm. Because successful parenting takes two. Mm. The bio parent who brought you here mm. as mm. a step parent in you, mm. it's a team effort. And how do you deal with the stigma um, that comes with being a step parent? You know, there's one thing with dealing with the challenges that come internal, internally yeah. uh, with the children, but you have people looking and saying, you're a stepmother. Yeah. How do you deal with that? Uh, I think in the beginning it comes from accepting your situation. Yeah. Because once I accept that this is the role that I have chosen, I'm a step parent. And trying to demystify the stigma around it. So once acceptance, you've accepted yourself, then you help even your children, your family to accept the situation. Then there's nothing to hide about. And you're open about it. You're open about the challenges, you're open about the joy, just like any other family. Mm. You have ups and downs, just like it. So acceptance is key, yeah. but you have to accept it yourself. Yes. And Jackie, I'll wrap up with you, because uh, the reality is there are a lot of step parents out there who do not like the situation they're in, uh, in terms of being a parent to children that aren't theirs. And some mistreat them, some are abusive. We had stories uh, this past week of such cases. What do you tell? those parents in terms of um, coming around to embracing that role and how important that is? I think it's unfortunate that we can uh, have wicked step parents yeah. to date yeah. because it's, not, it's actually not necessary. Mm. If you can't hack it, I think just leave. That's the easiest thing to do. That's, that's the best thing to do. There's no need of you getting into a step family relation just to sit there and think that um, you can change it by harming the child. Right. Yes, so that the child is out of the equation, like the news uh, for Meru the other day. Yes. That was very unfortunate. However, what I would also want to add is that when you choose to marry somebody who has kids, mm. you are not only choosing them. We choose our stepkids. Every day, us. you are choosing your stepchildren. Mm. In fact, the stepchildren do not choose mm. us. Mm. Because the decision to make a stepchild a stepchild is an adult conversation. Mm. It starts with the adults. So anytime you meet somebody who has kids, and you say, yes, I will marry you, you have chosen those kids. Mm. Even if you tell that woman, oh, leave your kids in charge so that we live with you mm. in Nairobi, mm. believe me, you have still mm. chosen mm. those kids kids. Mm -hmm. I have experienced women who have come to my office for sessions and they have met men who have told them, me, I just don't want your kid. Me, I want to marry you. Wow. And I always say, those are good men, Victoria. This is a man who has told you the truth. I can't hack it. Leave him. Please, you're not a rehab. You're not going to change <laughs> his mind. <laughs> you're not yeah. going to change his mind. Right. Yeah. All right. So take it as if this guy is telling you he can't hack it, believe me, he can't hack it. Because when you get into the step family, the dy dynamics are even more complex. Change completely. Yes. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you so much, Jackie and Catherine, for your time. Mm -hmm. We're being candid about your experiences. And hopefully, 
How would you change that perception that is out there when it comes to step parents? That it's not all doom and gloom. Mm -hmm. We have some positive, well meaning uh, stepmothers and stepfathers out there. Thank you so much for watching Citizen Weekend. I'm Victoria Ruba Deary. Have a lovely evening. Let's do this again tomorrow on Sunday Live. Jeff and I have a very exclusive feature on wind turbines in Turkana that are sitting idle. What's happening there? We'll give you the answers tomorrow. See